Where are you right now? Uh, we just were in uh, Destin, Florida, and now we're kind of making our way to Texas. <laughs> oh, okay, going west. Nice. Yeah, it's a, tra- yeah, nice. It's a travel day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you guys, are, uh, Queensryche will be here at the Palladium in Worcester on uh, April 7th. Uh, something I just learned recently about you, Michael, is that during the pandemic, when you guys couldn't tour, you actually took a job building houses. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, a good buddy of mine, you know, does uh, residential upgrades and things like that. So he just kept me uh, busy for a few months. Well, since that's true, I'd like to spend the rest of the interview talking about the uh uh, pressure-treated wood versus composite wood, and which would be best to <laughs> renovate my back deck, if that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> pressure-treated, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So have you always been, not to not to keep going on this, but have you always been handy? Have you always been, like, someone who could do construction? Uh, yeah, you know, I think a lot of uh, kids back in the time, you know, that we were in our teenagers learned the different, you know, trades and things that, uh, basic things and so it was kind of on the spot learning, but it was all pretty easy. A uh, great way to occupy your to- your downtime. Yeah, I mean it was good. It, you know, we didn't. It was a crappy time for everybody, so we didn't know what was going on. So I just did this for a while. You know, I just wanted to get out of the house. Oh, I hear you. Well, now you guys are back. You're you're firing on all cylinders. You're back on the road, like I said, at the Palladium here in Worcester, April seventh. Uh, the new album is awesome. Digital Noise Alliance. I have a couple of questions about that. The first one, I read that mm-hmm. you guys recorded the drums in a home that was formerly owned by Hulk Hogan. Uh, was that on purpose, or did you find that out afterwards? That is completely true. Wow. The uh, family that bought that house, our singer Todd LaTorre, knows. So they uh, own a bunch of nice big homes, and that one was... Uh, available for us to use for a few weeks <laughs> and it's a massive house it's awesome i was just wondering if uh if casey was like a big fan and he wanted he was like i want a big sound brother you know or, or anything but <laughs> you know <laughs> do you believe in stuff like that uh because there's another question i want to ask you about the album that kind of i think has something to do with it but like where you guys are recording or playing do you believe that the, that space the studio the house uh, the venue maybe retains some kind of spirit that maybe, uh, I don't know, creates a mood that maybe has you guys playing a, a certain way or that you feel like it's a certain way? Well, yeah, there's definitely a, an energy. You know, it's uh, it's unique, right? Because no one else is going to get that drum sound in that huge uh, third living room. So I, it definitely, you know, influences and everything. You just kind of... Uh, know that it's going to be a unique sound it's not a cookie cutter drum sound it's, it's something that we knew was going to be a uh, awesome i i asked that because i also read that you went uh, when recording digital noise alliance you went back to some amps that you hadn't used in some cases decades and was that just because you wanted to kind of go back to a certain sound or was it something that you else you were looking for in doing that uh, well when we commenced and started writing the album our producer uh, Zeus you know said let's let's change it up a little bit let's let's bring your uh, martial heads and I go yeah I still have them you know they're in my closet and I haven't used them in like you said a few decades but um, so we, we brought them in and, and uh, lit them up and fired away and it was it was awesome it was super fun for me because I get to use those again and I love the sound of them and we just had a way that we could get them into the uh, computer and 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 use utilize those sounds so and i've got some old old uh, amplifiers there in these amplifiers the capacitors dry dry out you know after about 10 15 years so they've been recapped and retubed and and they all sound really good and that was that was zeus who prompted that yeah. So Zeus has worked with you on this one and the past was it the past two albums, right? Correct. And now he's he's a he's a legend here because he's from Western Mass. He helped a lot of like metal hardcore bands just uh, achieve great recordings. Bands like Shadows Fall and Hatebreed and 
and Kill Switch and Gage. What is it about Zeus that keeps Queensryche going back to him? I think he makes us comfortable. We have a mutual trust with him. You know, we consider him an asset to the recording because he knows our idiosyncrasies. He knows our past. He knows our music throughout. And he knows how to pull the best performances from us. And plus, he's just an all-around cool guy to hang out with. <laughs> and that's, for your band, that's important. You got to be friends with a producer. You don't want someone who you're going to butt heads with all the time. Exactly. You know, the, they're, the producer's job is to make the musicians comfortable, not be racist. Well, you guys have been doing it long enough where it's like you don't need to be told, I guess. I mean, it's been how long for Queen's Queensryche? Is it over 40 years at this point you've been doing this? I think it's 40 years. Wow. It feels like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. On a bus going to Texas, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Eddie Jackson and I are, are the uh, OGs of the band. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Not a lot of bands can say that, you know, not a lot of musicians can, can have that, you know, that one gig for so long. That's a, it's, it's definitely a very few people. I was, uh, you know, you've, you've said in the past many times how Eddie Van Halen uh, influenced you and uh, to take the path you've taken in music. Are there still guitar players that inspire you since you've been doing this for 40 years? Are there still guitar players you listen to that inspire you or Maybe there's some newer guys out there that inspire or impress you. Well, I'm pretty old school with my guitar influences. But like like you said, Van Halen was a, a big uh, influence on me in my teenage years. And but you know, I love Jimmy Page. I love listening to the way his creativity in the studio it just blew my mind. And and uh, you know, there's other guitar players that that have just great tone and feel um like michael Schenker, i really like mm, him and yes um you know I, I listen to a lot of guitar players and you know to tell you the truth i listen to anything these days that i have time usually in the morning i get up and have like two or three espressos and i put on <laughs> classical music and i, I that's how i get my day my day going <laughs> who's who's us what are like some of your favorite classical composers um, well, I'm an Andre Segovia nut. Oh, unbelievable. Yes. So I just, you know, put it on random and, and, and anything he touched played is to me is just pure perfection. He, um, he sounded like four guitar players at some points. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, I respect a lot of the, uh, the newer players. I, I listened to them and, and, but he just had that sound you know that he had those big meaty sausage fingers you know and just playing these amazing passages and with such it's just his tone it's just it's amazing yeah you guys are touring with a a, a, a great guitar player now marty friedman he's on this current tour right yeah on this tour we have trauma opening up the show they're uh a thrash metal band from the Bay Area. Um, and then we have Marty Friedman's band, you know, from Japan. They flew all the way here and, and they're uh, great musicians and great musicianship. So, you know, we're really psyched about that. So there's a good diversity in the show. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we just hope that people can come out and check it out because it's a really good package. Well, it's April 7th at the Palladium here in Worcester. Excited to have you back in Worcester. And there's going to be some, obviously, some amazing guitar playing that night. So I suggest everybody get there early uh, to take it all in. And uh, just to, of note, you know, earlier we were talking about a room, a house, a studio, or a venue retaining the spirit of, uh, of uh, things that have gone on there. And the Palladium here in Worcester has been a theater here since the 20s. Uh, And I saw some great shows there like Dylan and Prince and uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan there. But of note, uh, the Three Stooges actually did a live performance at the Palladium in the 30s. So don't be surprised if you're up there during a massive solo and Curly or Moe or Larry like appears in front of you. I just don't want you to be alarmed. Okay. I'll warn the guys. (laughs) Yeah, warn the guys. You know, Larry, Larry may appear in front of you going, hey, why don't you play something for Rage for Order or something like that? You know, he, 
He seems like he would be the Queensryche fan of the three of them. Awesome. Well, Michael Wilton, it's been a pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you very much for taking the time. Safe travels to Texas and back up the East Coast here. We're looking forward to seeing you at the Palladium here in Worcester on April 7th. And uh, Digital Noise Alliance, fantastic album. So thanks for thanks for keeping it going, man. We appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me. And most of all, thanks for supporting live music.